Hey Commanders, this is Commander Atlas Rand, and today I'm going to be doing another video testing out the fastest method to make merits in PowerPlay 2. You can see we're arriving at Shiftnal Port. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is actually going to Shiftnal Port here in Disso, as well as next door in Orer, and picking up uh, the rare goods in both of these uh, in order to let me back real quick here uh, in order to test to see whether or not doing these two ports in combination is actually a faster way to make merits for people who don't have carriers so my fastest ma way that I discovered was Suntil Relics um, but I also have a carrier and that makes it um, faster in order to be able to uh, use the carrier to load that up rather than just making one run back and forth in a Type 8 or some other ship. So I'm going to get a timer going and then um, see how long it takes to do this run and compare it to how long it takes to do the other run. Um, so this may be a faster way. I'm not saying it's not, but it's worth testing. Okay. We are in the station, so I am starting the timer. Unfortunately, the timer is not on the screen, but uh, I will tell you what that time comes out to when we're done. All right, come out of your market. I'm going to do as quick as I can. Buy the magic corn they got here. 120 of it. Boom. Get out of here right away. Got a lunch. And then we're going to jump next door to Orer. Right there. And then pick up the beer at that station. Now, I'm not going to try and save a few seconds here by using manual docking or in manual launching. Simply because if you're going to be doing this activity for four hours or maybe even eight hours during the day, you're probably going to be doing other things while this is happening. So the automation part of it, I want to have it apples to apples. I had automation when I was doing the other run with Suntil Relics. I'm going to have automation when I'm doing this run. Okay, now that we're out, let's jump to Orer. However you pronounce that. All right, while we're doing this... Um, I had a few comments from people saying I was breathing into the microphone. So the microphone is further away now. Let me know if, if it sounds better, the same, worse, or, um, or if it's too quiet. So the idea here is if you don't have a carrier, you want to maximize the amount of rare goods you have in cargo. So I picked up 120 there. In a rare, we're going to pick up 128. So we're going to have, what, 248 total, I guess. And I've got 320 room in here, so I certainly have room for that. All right, where is the station? Uh, actually have one of my carriers here as well because um, this is the run I was originally doing but I didn't have a timer running so we're doing it with a timer now all right let's get to that station pretty close Sharon Lee free market and I think this is a pirate run station if you haven't been out here take a look at it um, I think they're pirates maybe they're just anarchists All right, I'm going to try not to do a loop. Actually, slow down. We are three minutes in at this point. The advantage here is you're not having to wait for the 10 minutes between 
availability of rare goods. So if you go to the same station over and over and over, like if you're filling up a carrier, the there is a minimum amount of time you have to wait before the rare goods respawn and become available again. And that time is uh, 10 minutes, which means you can get a maximum of six reloads if you time it perfectly. Um, all right, come on, station, where are you? Uh, so if you're picking up 80, so 80 times 6, so you're looking at 480 total goods that you can pick up in an hour. You're probably going to take a little more than an hour because you're not going to be exactly on the 10-minute mark. But um, 480 maximum Sultan Relics, for example, per hour. Now, picking up these two goods, you're more than doubling that number per hour of goods because you're, um, you're picking up 128 and 120 instead of 80. And you're also loading both of them without having to wait 10 minutes between them. So let's get in here nice and quick. <clears throat> Which could mean higher profits. And like I said, this was the original system I started doing this in, but I really found that doing the Sunsil Relics gave me more merit payout. And I think that's mainly because the Sunsil Relics cost more, so there's more profit. And the payout is based on distance and profit. And... Um, and I think it, it kind of topped out at 200 light years. I did a test at 200 light years or 295 light years, 292 light years, something like that. The payout was exactly the same number of merits. So there's really no point that I found in going beyond 200. Okay, we're landed. Let's buy them right away. Vicious Brew. All right. Got it. Now we're loaded up and we're going to leave the station. Auto launch. launch. We are at six minutes right now into it. And while this is auto launching, I'm going to find a system close to where I've been delivering this. Probably a little further because this is too close. I need, yeah, this is 157. I need something that is, um, that is going to be at least 200 light years. So how about this guy right here? 172. How about this one? 179. Over here. 192. Uh, 192. 194. 197. Uh, I don't want to go into a fortified. It's 196. 203. There we go. That's That's where we're going to go. 203 light years. Here we go. Now, let's get there as quick as possible. Uh, we've got how many jumps? Five jumps. That's not bad. Five jumps, which means we're probably going to be using neutron stars or, well, not neutron, but uh, white dwarfs. But I want to make sure that it was going to be just over 200 because I want the conditions to be as even as possible. Um, the Suntils I'm delivering at just over 200. And they're generating 18,000 in merits for 320 units. So if you divide that by four for a single load, it's about 4,600 or so is what it comes out to per load of 80. So single single load that you can buy at one time is 80 on the Suntils, and that's, that's coming out to 4,600 or so merits. This thing runs pretty hot, I will say that. Um, running, if I was doing just something without a carrier and flying back and forth, I probably would try and use the Mandalay it runs quite a bit cooler and it has a longer jump range. The main reason I'm using the Type 8 generally is because of the extra cargo capacity so I can haul 320 of them all at once. 
All right, let's fuel up quickly here. And if you are new to the game, you probably are not watching this video, but if you are, I will be doing a video on how to uh, supercharge um, your frame drive so that you can utilize neutron stars and void dwarfs to go longer distances. It You do have to be a little careful. If you're not careful, there is a chance that you will end up crashing uh, out of warp and into normal space and then potentially overheating. But right now I'm just trying to get there as quick as possible. We are at nine and a half minutes right now. Alright. System control dire, defense fleet in state expansion. Scan 43 bodies, 18%. Warning, frameship drive operating beyond safety limits. Frameship drive supercharged. Drive boosted by 1.5 times. Frameship drive Retracting hard point. FSB charging. What do I got left? Two more jumps. at LHS 1442 first visit jump distance 55.4 light years fuel use 5.1 tons system controlled by pick and public group scan 33 bodies progress is 8% current drive note total of one star and nine planets in this system frame shift drive supercharged, frame shift drive supercharged by 1.5 times Weapons away. FSB charging. Okay, I think this is the last jump. I have no idea what's in that system. If we have a large station or small stations, so we'll find out. Okay, and we got a large station. All right, that's good to know. How close is it? Oh, it's real close. Good. I almost don't have to go full speed. I'm in slow speed right away. Scan this one, I don't think I've been here. Now we're going to find out if this is more profitable. <coughs> And honestly, if this is more profitable, this may also be more profitable with a carrier. I don't know yet. That's why we do all the tests. Mass 
The voices you're hearing, I've got, um, what is this thing called? Uh, EDD, ED Discovery running. ED Discovery has a voice option that ends up providing voice readouts for a lot of things in the game. It's a very good software, highly recommended. At some point, I'll actually do a video just on that piece of software. Okay, we are landed. It is 14 and a half minutes. Let's sell and see how many merits we get. So we got to do some quick math because there's two different things to sell. So first batch of merits is 2931. Second batch is... 31 so 20 so yeah over 6,000 for sure uh 2931 so yeah 6100 merits 6100 merits we are at 15 minutes right now but to really make it a true test we have to fly back do a full round trip so start to finish and that'll tell you how long it takes to make 6100 merits and by the way, the person who brought this loop to my attention was Derelict Dogma. So shout out to them. Um, although I technically I did this loop. I was just doing it with 100 years previously. I had my carrier out here. But it just seemed like it wasn't generating as much money as the, the Soontil Relics loop. Okay, so... Let's just go right back to, uh, well, it's not Suntil, it's, uh, where'd we come from? Um, da, 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 da. Oh, Disso, there we go. That's where I started. So go back to Disso, that, and let's see how long that takes to be exactly where we started. We're gonna try and get this back there in about five minutes, but we'll see how long it takes. A uh, total of four jumps back, because we're lighter. I think we're going to be mostly using white dwarves on the way back there. Arrived at LHS 1547. First visit. Jump distance 49.4 light years. Fuel use 5.1 ton. System controlled by Sirius Special Forces. Current note total of two stars and 14 planets in the system. Drive boosted by 1.5 times. Weapons away. Charging. Main engine charging. Okay, three jumps left. Four, three, two, one. Warping to system LP. One hundred and four dash two. Warning star is dangerous. Throttle down now. White dwarf DC class star. Non scoopable. Make it so. at LP 104-2 first visit jump distance 73.3 light years fuel use 4.9 tons system controlled by Minutemen and stay tuned Warning. scan 42 bodies 13% current known total of 2 stars and 11 planets in this system Oop, didn't get enough fuel okay this is going to be a slight slowdown but that's all actually part of the uh, part of the risk here um Sometimes you may not uh, get all the fuel you need in one jump through here. There we go. That's not enough. All right, now we're supercharged. 
Retracting hardpoint. Charging FSD. I this would take just a little bit slower to go without using the white dwarves and it would probably add one or two jumps but honestly the difference in time is not huge because without the white dwarves um, you're just going around the sun and jumping right away with the white dwarves you're having to go into that stream and then you know try and fuel up there before you jump so you do go further, but it does take a little bit more time using white dwarves. Alright, and there's Disso, so one jump away. This ship does overheat, so I don't want to start charging until we're a little further away from the sun. We are at 19 and a half minutes right now, so I think by the time we're in the station, probably be somewhere around 22, 23 minutes. Um, which would be a little bit less than three round trips per hour. And at just over 6,000, if it's exactly three round trips, it comes out to about 18,000, which is what I was getting every 45 minutes with the carrier. So, it still seems like the uh, the carrier route is a faster route, but this may be the better alternative for people that are not using a carrier. Where's the station? There it is. Okay. Pretty close. Just accelerate a little bit. We're at 21 minutes. If you see that I'm actually accelerating a little bit faster as I get closer to where I'm going, I have a video on using that technique with um, Super Cruise Autopilot. What is it called? Super Cruise. Yeah. Anyway, all right, let's park and then we'll stop the clock as soon as I'm actually parked in the station. And we'll tell you exactly what the round trip time was. Um, keep in mind, I did have that uh, uh, double fuel situation with the white dwarf, but honestly, something is always going to delay you a little bit. So uh, if you can do it in less time than I did it, great. But your average time may still be pretty close to what I'm getting here. And I started the timer in the station yeah. right before doing the purchase. So we're going to stop it in the station when I'm fully landed, right at about the time that I could do a purchase, but I'm not going to do one, obviously. I'm just going to park here. We are at 23 minutes right now. And support sources. Okay, 23 and a half minutes, roughly. So 23 and a half minutes, you could do a little less than three of these per hour so i would say somewhere between 17 and 18,000 merits per hour depending on how perfectly you execute a run of this so uh about comparable to uh, using the carrier and doing this one tills and it may actually be a little bit more 
using a carrier doing these two as well, but I'm not sure. We'll just wrap up the video here. Um, and again, thanks for uh, Delvict Dagba for uh, suggesting this option.